uh, this meeting is the very first one on the topic of social neuroscience in the Keystone meeting series. Uh, it may also be the first of its kind in meetings of the same caliber, including garden conferences and co spring hybrid meetings. So um, as more behavioral paradigms and more tools for behavioral analysis are becoming available, um, I believe now is a golden time to study social neuroscience. And such a meeting is timely and we are super excited to uh, bring together top leaders in the field. Um, this will uh, be a op uh, unique opportunity for scientists of the same interest to interact, to brainstorm, and hopefully will uh, come up with new ideas and directions that will move the field forward. So research in my lab uh, is largely concerned with emotional and social behaviors, and we are interested in understanding how these behaviors are encoded in the brain and how they may be shared, uh, shaped by experience um, through plastic changes in relevant neural circuits. So impairment in social behaviors is one of the major symptoms of depression. So impairments may include withdrawal from social interactions, avoidance of social competitions, reduced empathy and impaired uh, emotional recognition. So one of the reasons behind uh, this impairment is thought to be um, thought to lie in the deficit in the social reward circuits. We know that in depression, serotonin and dopamine are dysregulated. So this may um, impair the circuit in a way that would diminish uh, the pleasure associated with social interactions, causing social or withdraw or even social aversion. So we focus on a relatively new but highly promising antidepressant drug called ketamine. So in contrast to the classical SSI type of antidepressant, for example, ketamine can take effect very rapidly, often within hours. So in our work, we found uh, ketamine antagonizes this anti-reward center in the brain. So in depression, the activity of this anti-reward center goes up and they may uh, go on to suppress the reward circuits hmm. and, and downregulate dopamine level or serotonin level. So with ketamine's action, it will actually quench the activity of this anti-reward center, therefore disinhibiting or taking off the break onto this reward circuit to rapidly uh, improve moods. So through this work, we identified several molecules that may be uh, that can regulate the activity of this anti-reward center, mm. and they may provide promising targets for um, new antidepressant treatment. So in humans with infusion of ketamine, um, the effect can last up to one week, even though uh, the, uh, the drug itself may metabolize very quickly. So within several mm. hours. Um, there's only half of drug left. So that suggests that there are some neural mechanisms supporting this sustained effect of the mm. drug. And these are also an area that we are actively looking into, trying to understand why the effect can last so long.